Hi everybody, uh, this is Dr. Vincent again, making another LDI-based video, uh, this time about acne. <clears throat> acne and rosacea. We'll lump them in together even though they're a little bit different. So, acne is of course not a life-threatening condition, but it can be really socially impairing. If, if any of you had bad acne as a teenager, it's... It's a, it's a big deal, you know, people being ashamed of what their face looks like. So it's not a small thing, even though it's not a life-threatening illness, like a lot of the other things we treat with LDI. Um, so it took me a while to start experimenting with acne. It wasn't the high priority, right? But it's been several years now I've been working with acne with very good success overall. And <clears throat> the reason it occurred to me that LDI might work for acne is because it's treated as though it were an infectious disease, right? I mean, they give you topical uh, alcohols and disinfectants and things to use on your skin, right? To lower the bacterial load and strip away the oils that the bacteria eat. And then they give you topical antibiotics to put on your face, which do work, right? There's some success with that. But as soon as you stop using it, it the acne comes right back, right? So what you're, what you're trying to get rid of is a bacterium that we know is part of your body's ecosystem. It's normal. It's always going to be there. You can't get rid of it. And that's exactly the kind of scenario that I found LDI works for, is when you think you're treating a chronic infection of some kind, right? But it doesn't get rid of the problem. It doesn't actually stop the condition long term. Whereas if you have like a bladder infection or pneumonia, you take antibiotics for three days to a week, 10 days, whatever, and then you're all better. You move on. Acne is treated as if it were an infection, but they'll put you on antibiotics for years, years, on and on. And if the topical antibiotics don't succeed, then you take oral antibiotics like doxycycline or minocycline or one of those or some other thing, clindamycin. And you take that just on and on for years. And we know that that's not necessarily good for you. When that fails too, then you get weird drugs like Accutane. Accutane has tremendous toxicity uh, and is a very scary drug. Only certain doctors are licensed to even be allowed to prescribe it. If you're a female and you're on Accutane, you, you are required to use like two different kinds of birth control because if you have a pregnancy while you're on Accutane, the baby can be very damaged. So this is a potentially a big deal, right? Because some of the treatments are really, really not good. Not good to use long term, at least in the case of antibiotics. So anyway, it occurred to me several years back, probably 2014, honestly, now it's 2020, that acne seems like an immunological response problem because the bacteria we're, in, we're looking at is called Propionibacterium acnes, which lives in the skin on the oily areas of the face, right? And the upper back. So acne classically involves these areas of the skin. If you get little pustules or things on your chest or torso or arms, that's not really acne, it's something else. It's a folliculitis. Usually it's staph bacteria or strep maybe. But Propionibacterium is kind of the target organism when it comes to what we call acne. Um, acne rosacea is a little different, so we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> but since it occurred to me that, oh, this is an immunological response to an organism that lives on the skin, maybe we can treat it with LDI. So what I did in 2014 was compiled not just that one bacterium, because I've always found that you know, broader collections of things make more sense. You can use the same antigen mixture for a lot of different things. Is that we, we uh, I did some research and I looked up 12 different types of bacteria that commonly cause various kinds of skin issues. So there's the Propionibacterium acnes, I also put in here various species of staph and strep, which can give you recurring skin boils, pustules, things like that. Impetigo, so when kids get that crusty, gross rash from their nose or mouth on the face, that's called impetigo. You can get rid of that too with this same mixture because it has staph and strep bacteria in it. Pseudomonas and uh, Carinibacterium species, Carinibacteria include diphtheria. But that's not the reason to use this, is that there's Carinibacterium in the armpits and other certain areas of the skin where you get something called hydradenitis suppurativa, um, which I should do a separate video on because that's a horribly painful issue. And those people who have it might not watch this video because it's labeled acne. But if you know anyone with hydradenitis suppurativa, it's a chronic pustular infection of your sweat glands. And that's what hydradenitis suppurativa translates into uh, in English. So in their armpits and sometimes around the abdomen and other places, but primarily the armpits, they'll have just horrifically painful pustules and cysts and tiny abscesses around those areas. 
this mixture that I put together gets rid of that also, which is amazing for those people because there's like nothing else that works for that that I've ever seen. Lots of antibiotics and steroid injections or different things that they'll do, those people just suffer. So anyway, the, the mixture I have that we use for these problems collectively is called SFB, which is skin flora bacteria. And there are 12 different bacteria in there. If you find our LDI formulas list, you can look up SFB, see what it's, see what's in it. We also, I think, have a list of things that I use it for listed there. Uh, so it's, it's a useful thing to look into with LDI. Odds are somebody that you know or somebody in your family would benefit from this mixture for one reason or another. So in terms of acne, though, when I put that together and I started using it now five or six years ago, I found that most people with acne do seem to respond to the SFB antigen mixture, that it's a skin bacterial reaction directly. Some of you do not. Um, the people with like deep cystic acne, that's actually more often a food reaction, I find. But any kind of acne can be too. So like in general, food sensitivities can lead to acne of any kind, any type. Um, if somebody developed cystic acne, you know, problems that wasn't just present through puberty or didn't manifest during puberty, a lot of times it's a food. But any kind of pustular or other minor acne can be food sensitivity too. So we've got the skin bacteria and foods. Another thing that I have found um, can give you acne issues are hormones. So in terms of immune response to hormones. And I've had some success in, in women using progesterone or estrogen um, for the antigen to get rid of their acne. Sometimes that's the magical thing that we use and it works great. And in men, sometimes it's testosterone instead or DHEA. Women can have those also. <clears throat> so for women... More hormones to consider uh, in men, it's pretty much the, the male androgenic hormones, testosterone or DHEA that might work as an antigen. So when I get somebody with acne, there are a lot of questions to ask, the whole story, the progression. It's not as simple as acne gets, gets cleared up with the skin bacteria mixture. I wish it were that simple, but very little is ever that easy when it comes to LDA. Too many different kinds of antigens can cause the same kinds of reactions. So I have a lot of success working with people with acne but sometimes they end up needing more than one of these antigens to get rid of it entirely. Sometimes it takes a while to puzzle through them and figure out which one's making the big difference. But it works. It works amazingly well for most people with acne, by far most people. And we just work through them in case, you know, incidents by incidents and whatever makes the most sense for that person. Hormones first for some people, um, you know, foods first for some people, the SFB, skin bacteria mixture for some people. Rosacea on the other hand, is usually yeast. Some people with regular acne will respond to yeast as the antigen also. It's not as common as the others with your typical kinds of whitehead, pustular, or cystic acne. But people who have the rosacea manifestation, where they get a lot of flushing and kind of more diffuse redness that goes across the middle of their face, includes the bridge of the nose, and then they get some red bumpies in there with it, most of those people respond to the yeast mixture, it turns out. It's an interesting manifestation of something you know, from the gut to the to facial skin, most likely, because there aren't really candida yeast species living in abundance on that part of your skin. But that's a that's an odd kind of separate acne associated thing is uh, the rosacea. Sometimes it gets better with foods. Sometimes it's the SFB, but most people with the rosacea manifestation more likely are a yeast reactive person, and a lot of them have other symptoms that suggest yeast sensitivity in other parts of the body too. So, I should probably do another video about these other skin things that are very cool that we can treat with these conditions too. But to focus on acne, rosacea, this collective, we have really good success dealing with this. And even though it's not a life-threatening or painful, you know, horrible, suffering kind of problem for everybody out there, um, it's, it's a big deal for those who have it and are very self-conscious about their face. So... This is something to consider that doesn't involve coating your face with a bunch of antiseptics or antibiotics all the time or different creams or paying through the nose for products like Proactive and other things to maintain your skin. It could be a lot simpler than that, perhaps. Um, once we find the right LDI strategy, you just take your dose every couple of months and your skin stays clear if we get it right. So give this a chance if uh, other things have failed you. Thanks.